Assalamu alaikum and peace. Welcome to this episode of Misconceptions. I'm your host for today, Muhammad Hashim, and in our studio we have our guest, um, Sheikh Yusuf Estes from America. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Also in our studio we have a, a <coughs> studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. Today, inshallah, we're going to delve into the notion of love and uh, we're going to talk about how other religions talk about love and uh, we're going to find out about love in Islam. So, Sheikh, love in Islam, it's a, it's a, it's a deep one, isn't it? Where, where do we begin? Uh, let's begin with the audience. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should <laughs> get go myself straight to off the, the hook here right away. <laughs> let's find out from the audience, uh, what do you guys heard about this? Some people say that uh, uh, there's no love in Islam. No love in Islam at all. Absolutely. Okay. Some religions say all about love. Some are all about love. Okay. Yeah. I have heard that. In fact, I grew up around that kind of notion okay. that the religion is all about love and it's an unconditional love no matter what. I would like to explore that before we go any further. And what do we mean by love? Because we use that word a lot in English talking about an emotional feeling we have towards something. Somebody might say, I love pizza. But what do they mean by loving the pizza? Other people say, I love my dog. Other people say, I love my mom. I'm sure you don't love the dog the way you love your mom. Eh? And I'm sure that you don't love your mom the way you love the pizza. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of clear. Different sorts of love. Yeah. Well, we're talking about different kinds of like or enjoyment and so on. But when it comes down to real love, what do we mean by that from a religious point of view? If you said our religion is just love and nothing else. And I heard some Muslims, by the way, who said, no, Islam is all about love. I've heard that from some Muslims. But actually, this would be ludicrous. Because if it's only about love, then this is only one side and there's no room for any other emotion. Let me explain a little bit more detail. In Islam, we have a law, Almighty God, and He has characteristics. He has traits. He has what we call His asma wa safa, His names. One of those names is sabur. This means in English, the patient. He is as sabur, yes. the patient. And the way it's structured in the Arabic language, there's no room for him not to be patient because he is the epitome of that particular characteristic. He is it. And in fact, any patience existing in the creation must be coming from him because he's the patience. There isn't any other patience except it has to come from him. Likewise, he is al-alim, which is from ilm or knowledge. Allah is the knowledge. Not just that He has knowledge, He is knowledge, and we would not be able to have any knowledge except what comes from Him. An example here is from the Quran itself. Allah is telling us in Ayatul Kursi, chapter 2, verse 255, that He is the knowledge and having knowledge of everything and you don't have knowledge except that he gives it to you by his will okay. so in the same way we want to look at this word love now in islam in the quran we do have this clearly mentioned he, allah is al wadud that's one of his characteristics but it isn't love as a noun it's loving as a form of the verb in the process of loving continually, unending, without beginning, without end. That is Allah Himself. So because it is an epitome and it is absolute, there's no room for us to come along and say, I'm love. Huh? Now I can have love, I can extend love, but that love would have to come from Allah. So now we have a scope and a... And a definition about what love is. Now there's a word in Arabic mentioned many times, hab, hab. And this is love. And Allah used la hab. Allah doesn't love some things and in other case, what He does love. 
So it's not all one-sided. We don't say God is love. We say Allah is the loving. Okay, to the studio audience, what does it mean to, to love? What's your definition of love? Uh, yes, we can say love is emotion. Emotion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, love is uh, life. Love is life. life. That's good. Okay. Love is to care. Love is to care. So, love, okay. life and emotion. What do you think about that, Sheikh? Well, there's some points in each one of the descriptions we had. When we talk about emotion, obviously love is an emotion, without doubt. This is an emotion. Is, yeah. You can define it as an emotion. But it wouldn't take us very far because we wouldn't know what kind of emotion. When we say life, I don't know exactly if I would define that because there are a lot of things in life that I don't love. But certainly when we come back to about caring, I think now we're beginning to compartmentalize the word and get an understanding. When someone cares more about one thing than another thing, this begins to show us about this word love. It's a caring about one thing more than another. To the extent that what I love for myself, I should love for my brother. This is what I'm taught in Islam, that I have to prefer the needs of my brother over my own. So what I love for myself, I have to prefer it for my brother. Now, in Christianity, we learned that you love your brother as yourself. And that's good, you know. Or do unto others as you would have people do unto you. But here we have the case of preferring the needs of the brother over your own. What I love for me, still I would acquiesce and give it over to someone else because they need it. And I would not worry about my own stomach, I'd worry about his. Let's take an example of this from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said he's not a believer who fills his stomach and goes to sleep at night while his neighbor's stomach remains empty. So I don't love my food so much that I fill up and tell you, with tough luck, buddy. No, you're my neighbor. I have to prefer your needs. So even though it means I might not be full, maybe I would even be hungry, but I'd be sure that my neighbors were fed. So they asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who are my neighbors? And he said, 40 alarbayim in any direction. So certainly this is a big subject in Islam. When we talk about preferring the needs of others, and this is how we will define love, okay. when we will do, as our brother said, we're going to care. We're going to care about something to a larger extent than might be normal. When I care a lot about my mother, who do I care the most about after Allah and his messenger? This is another example given by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was asked, after Allah, now I have to love Allah. That's in Islam. You have to love Allah more than anything. And if you don't love Allah, then you're not a Muslim. That's simple. And you have to love his messenger more than yourself. And you have to love the Quran. Now, after Allah, and after the Messenger, and after the Quran, after these principal teachings here, Islam, you got to love Islam, who, living and breathing on the earth, should I love most? Give the most rights to. Who has the most rights on my respect and love? And then who? And then? Your and after that? Your father. Ah, and this is what Islam is teaching me, that after Allah and His Messenger, after the Quran and Islam itself, the one who has the most rights to my love is my mother. And then who? And the Prophet says, Islam said, your mother. And then who? Your mother. And then your father. Some people said it's because three times more to the father than the mother. But a more balanced approach to the understanding is because women had no rights. Mothers had no respect prior to Islam coming in the Arab Peninsula. Around the world, the treatment of women was really very poor at that time. But here now comes something amazing. Not only saying that your mother has rights, but emphasizing it three times before even mentioning the father. So suddenly, what was before Islam was reversed that she was put in a very high place of esteem, respect, and above all, love. 
but a kind of love that we can understand to have some real meaning to it. Just to say, I love you, what is that? I want to give you an example about something. Somebody uh, comes home, a boy comes home from school to his mom. Mom, I love you. Oh, okay, that's very nice. Would you mind to mow the lawn for me? Because I have hay fever and the pollen count is very high today. So if you will go out and mow the lawn, I would really, I'd really appreciate it. No, mom, I don't want to do that, but I love you. Oh, and mom, I brought you some flowers. Son, I have this condition. I can't be around pollen. These flowers are going to hurt me. Yeah, I know, but I like them. Oh, yeah, mom, I love you. Now, suppose he comes again the next day and he says, Mom, I love you. Yes. Well, why don't you go to the kitchen and wash the dishes for me? My legs are swelling up. I have diabetes, you know. And so if you just go wash the dishes, that would be great. No, Mom, I don't want to do that. Oh, but I brought you some chocolate candy. You brought me chocolate candy? I have diabetes. I can't even eat it. I know, but I like it. And I got a good deal on them too. These chocolates are delicious. Oh, yeah, Mom. I love you. <laughs> so now we're seeing what he really loves is himself. And this is an exaggeration, but still true. A lot of times when people talk about love, I love you. What do you really love? I love how I feel whenever you give me the things I want. And this is what we find what a lot of people mean by love. Okay, so we, we're dissecting the meaning of love and the meaning of love in Islam. We're going to have to go to a quick break now. And when we return, we'll come back with uh, Sheikh Yusuf, Yusuf Estes and we'll uh, continue our talk about love, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Misconceptions. I'm your host, Muhammad Hashim. We're continuing our conversation about love. It's very interesting. Okay, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, love, how do we perceive it? Well, love, as we mentioned in the first part of the program, deals with emotion, yep. deals with life, but it also deals about caring. Now, what do you care most about? What you really want in life, that's really what you love. Hmm. Now, when we say to other people, I love this, I love that, or we say that I love you, what do we really mean about hmm. that? What, where are we really coming from? And I think it's a good chance to get, let our brothers in the audience uh, maybe bring... We should. We should get a couple of questions yeah, from the audience. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yes. Uh, how do we understand love in Islam? How do we understand it in Islam? And that's exactly what I'm leading to, exactly. Because in the secular world, or if you want, uh, outside of Islam anyway, love can have a lot of meanings. But in Islam, it's very clear what Islam is about. The love in Islam is, first of all, for Allah. We love Allah above all things, because Allah is our only creator, our only sustainer. Whatever we have is coming from Him. As difficult as it may sound, we love what Allah gives us even if it's not what we like. We still love the idea that Allah has given it to us as a test, as a condition, maybe even as a punishment because it will take away an ultimate punishment which might befall us later in the next life. So we try to understand as much as we can about Islam, but what we don't understand, we still accept it and we still love what Allah is giving us as a way of life called Islam. So this is the ultimate. And we love Allah in His deen above everything. Then after that is the love of our Prophet. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, we <clears throat> love him so much. To give you one example, at the time of the life of Muhammad wasallam, one of his companions was being tortured. Horribly, they were doing horrible things to this man. You can't uh, even begin to imagine the things that they were doing to him. Then they said, don't you wish that Muhammad was here being tortured instead of you? And look what he said, not even one hair on his head. Not even one hair on his head. I would rather you just go ahead and torture me, not bother him one hair. Now, this is, the, and this is not hypothetical. This man was actually going through this pain. And they killed him. Of course, we know in Islam that he'll achieve a great reward with Allah. But how about where you're here and you're suffering through these things and you still understand that it is Allah who is allowing these things to happen. You still love Allah even if you don't love 
the condition you find yourself in. This is a big test. When we talk about loving the Qur'an, what do we mean by that? We love the Qur'an not just because it's nice to recite, but because the meaning that comes to us, the understanding that's there for us, and what it will benefit us here in this life and the next life. We have a big love for this Qur'an. You know yourself, and you see it in the news, how Muslims go absolutely ballistic. They go crazy when somebody desecrates even the written word of the Qur'an. We, we get really upset about it because we know it to be the word of Almighty Allah. So there's a big love here. Then what about when we talk about love for each other? The love for a brother Muslim is that we prefer their needs over our own needs, as we discussed in the first part of the episode. But also that we love them so much that even if they hurt our feelings, we won't want to go back and hurt their feelings. We just pray for them to be rightly guided. We would even give our brothers an excuse 70 times 7. We would give an excuse 70 times 7 before we'd ever criticize them. Well, maybe he misunderstood. Maybe this, maybe that. Until we have exhausted any part of an excuse. And you would never find 70 times 7 excuses. So... We just don't want to criticize because of this. This is real love. This is when you really care a lot and put it to the extent that there isn't anything that's going to compare to that. Now, when we talk about love for a woman, Muslims do very much. We love our wives. There's no doubt about it. At the same time, though, we don't say that we love our wife more than we love Allah. We don't love our parents more than we love Allah. And in Islam, we know to love your parents is very big as we discussed. Loving your mother, your mother, your mother, and then your father. This is above everybody else. But still, if they want you to do something that's against Islam, you're not allowed to do that. Islam is very clear on that. Is there a difference there? You've mentioned all the different types of love in Islam. Is there a difference between explaining love and perceiving love as Muslims? Well, certainly. You know, one of the things that I didn't do, I didn't put it in any particular order as much as Islam might indicate uh, the love of Allah and His Messenger is first, the love of your parents, as we mentioned, the love of your spouse, obviously, but there's a type of love here that is mentioned in Islam. We don't find it. We don't find this prevalent in other societies as much, and that's a love for yourself. There is a love for yourself that you will give yourself respect. You give yourself honor and dignity, not to show off, not to be better than somebody else. Not, not, not vanity. Not so ever. Not vanity. Not van- ah, that's the word, not yes. Vanity. vanity is what we're against. But we must respect our body. Our body itself has rights on us. And if we don't give our body rights, that body will be against us on the day of judgment. So it's all part of the love. It's also respect for yourself. It's very, very important. When we start talking about love, it is often a sacrifice. That's why I like so much when our brother mentioned the word care. Because what do you care about? And when you care more for others than you do for yourself, you care more about Islam than you do about your own personal gain. You care more about showing the truth than you do about making a few bucks here and there. This is the kind of love that Islam is insisting on. This is real Islam. This is the, the true love of Islam. Any other questions from the studio audience regarding... Yes, brother. So how can we explain it to the other people? How can we explain it to other people? Islam. Well, yeah, okay. Now, in other programs, we said the same thing. But again, what we would do, is they come to you and say, like we what started we with, do? you guys don't have any love. You know, you guys yeah, don't we, love. We you know, there's lot. no love in your Quran. You don't have any love in your uh, religion. It's a bit bad, you know, violent and, and aggressive. Yeah, no aggressive love. tones. Then what do we say? Remember? Thank you for asking me about my religion. Islam is about truth. If I lie, I can go to hell forever. Everything about Islam is preserved. We have the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Arabic language for 1,400 years, never been changed. You can check it all for yourself. And then finally, if you find something in the answer that you like better than what you have, would you be ready to move from what you have to what's better for you? Based on that, let's talk about what's real love. And then open it up as a dialogue. Let them talk too. What do you see as love? You can ask them, what do you see as love? And he says, I see love as peace. Well, now you give it a whole different word. 
Or he said, oh, how much I love my wife. Or how much I love my money. Oh, I love my job. I love my dog or pizza. Well, there's different things they talk about love. But we in Islam have an order. And we understand it's about caring more for something over our own desires, our own lusts. Because the word Islam, we can come back to that and mention. Islam is about surrendering, submission, and obedience in sincerity and being at peace with whatever comes as a result of that. If we understood that, we have no objection to love being mentioned in these terms that it is to love something even though it's not necessarily what you like. Make sense? What about the notion of a lot of people that I've spoken to say they don't believe in God because God is supposed to be love. And if something bad happens to them, where's the love in God? How do you, how do you kind of explain that being a Muslim? Uh, one of the things that's very beautiful about Islam, one of the big beauties of Islam is to understand this concept. That just because something bad happens mm. doesn't mean that it's really all bad. Right. Also, when something good happens doesn't mean it's necessarily all good because the life we live in here is an imperfect life. The perfect life waits for us after this life. We understand what's happening here to be a test. And in some cases we enjoy the test and in other cases we don't. But in all cases it's a test. Whether we're receiving a lot of material wealth or a good position, the things we want, or whether it's a loss of wealth and things that we don't like. We find in chapter 89 of the Quran, Surah Al-Fajr, talking about that when Allah says that whenever I give my servant all the wealth and the good things of this life, he says, my God has, or has honored me. It's like showing off. But then whenever Allah restricts his wealth, takes things away from right. him in this life, that's when he says, my Lord has disgraced me. But then in the following verses, Allah describes it, breaks it down, lays it out for you. He says, no way. It's because you guys do not honor or take care of the orphan. You don't feed the impoverished people. You love wealth with an abounding love. That's when he uses that word. And you clearly, clearly understand this hub, hub dunya, love for the material yes, world. world. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yes, said upon that a human being, the son of Adam, look how much he loves wealth. If he had a mountain of gold, he'd want another one just like it. And he loves wealth so much that it consumes him to the point that all he wants, just wants this material world until he is filling his stomach with dirt, meaning when he dies and he's in the grave. This is how they, they understand that. So love doesn't necessarily have to be something positive and something always on our side, something that we always benefit from. Yeah, in this, world, in this world. Because we're looking for a bigger reward in the next world. Well, that makes sense to me, and I'm sure it makes sense to the studio audience. Any final words, uh, Sheikh Estes? Yes, I would like to remind myself and all of us the importance of dealing with the heart, to clean out this heart and then allow true love to come to us from the Creator Himself by asking Him, asking Him, Oh God, guide me, guide me to this love, guide me. And then that's where we'll find it, right there. Inshallah, Allah can guide us all into true love and the understanding of true love. Well, we've run out of time again. It's um, the end of Misconceptions one more time. And I hope we've uh, talked about love in, in depth and we've got some really good answers for you. So thank you for um, staying tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.